Euphoria season two was really bad. And I know we love defending our favorite shows, but there was just no excuse. Eight episodes, no character development. Stuff was happening, but it was only happening for shock value. We have the finale, and what did we really learn? There were so many loose ends, there were so many plot holes, there were so many things that just didn't add up. The math wasn't mathing. Season one had a structure and a direction. Each episode was narrated by Rue, and it followed every individual character in the cast and gave us a rich backstory into who they were and what they were going through. However, the show itself is plot driven. Well, it was plot driven. Here's what I mean. Okay, so we have Jules sleeping with Cal, Nate finding out about it and using it to lure Jules, their catfish relationship, which was all a means to confront her. And once said confrontation happened, Jules is used as a witness against Tyler. Who is Tyler? The guy that Maddie hooked up with in the pool, who Nate nearly beat half to death and strangled Maddie over. When Maddie is questioned by the police and Nate is nearly charged, Tyler is used as a scapegoat. When reported by who? You guessed it, Jules. I know to some, for season two, it seems like, oh, we're not focusing on the characters, that's the problem. But a plot-driven or a narrative-driven story does push our characters forwards. That's why it works. And Sam Levinson literally did not have a plot. He didn't have a plan going into the season. I don't know what happened, given how much time he had to prepare, but what was it? This was the only time Zendaya was free and he was like, damn, let me just throw pen to paper and write anything. He needs to get a writer's room. But moving on. The first and most obvious victim of this terrible season is Kat, but that's easy, so I can address that later. The silent victim is Jules. What's Jules been doing this season? What's her storyline? What's her purpose? What are her inner thoughts? What are her motivations? We really don't know. In the final episode, you know, the 59 minute episode, which, how do you have 59 minutes of an episode and still show absolutely nothing? Like, I, I'm not, you know, ashtray, RIP, but it still felt like nothing happened. Like there was no rhyme or reason to the event. And the first 13 minutes of that scene with Lexi and her play and Cassie and Maddie jumping on stage, it lasted too long. Like it, it was, it felt so filler. It was as though Sam Levinson, yeah, I'm gonna keep putting it on him because he's the only one writing this stuff, had nothing else to do. So he was like, let me try and make these first 15 minutes chaotic so no one knows that absolutely nothing is happening. And that is what Sam Levinson does. He tricks us. He tricks us with cinematography and great music, minus Elliot's song. And he makes us think that, oh, this is, because that's how he tricked me in the beginning of season two. I thought that the season was progressing nicely, but by episode three, four, it was pretty clear that it had no direction. Here's a summary of Jules season two. Jules is in a relationship with Rue by episode two. After some sex hiccups, she cheats on her in episode three. By episode four, she finds out that she's an addict. What does any of this mean for her character other than character regression? And I know some Jules fan take umbrage with the fact that a lot of the fandom isn't on Jules's side and is very critical of her. But you have to understand, they don't have a lot to work with. They really don't. We're told by Rue that Jules is, what does she call her? She's like, oh, she's super sensitive. She's the best effing person on the planet. But when you put out lines like that, the character has to live up to it. So people have this whole issue, well, how can people, I don't know, not that people like Nate, but be interested in Nate and even be interested in Cal. There's a difference. They're painted as the villains. Like it's, it's on their forehead villain but we're being told that Jules is amazing that she's above all of this and so when a character is put on a pedestal in that way everyone's gonna tear them down when these two characters are already like deep down in the basement to the pits of hell it's easy to enjoy a villain and not take their actions as uh, horribly or horrifically as you would uh, a good character because you're like you're supposed to be good and then there's the piece of shit character you're like well Path of the course, isn't it? Sam is just throwing things to the wall and hoping that it sticks, but it's not. It's it's falling off, all the way off, which is where the show will go eventually. <laughs> now who am I getting it to for you? It's got Zendaya, we'll keep watching. Um, but he does things for shock value. Like for example, that scene with Maddie and Nate and the gun. What was that about? How, 
why did he write that? Why did he think that was the route to go? That Nate's just waiting in her room. It even looked, um, reading the interview, that, oh, it wasn't really all that planned. I was like, yeah, you can tell. And that there was an alternative that they were thinking of that maybe that Maddie would have given the tape to Jules. That could have been better. But again, he knows he's got nothing going on this season. So he's like, yeah, let me pull out a gun. It felt like the OC season too, you know, mm, what you say? I was like waiting for someone to get shot. It didn't make sense. In episode five, when Rue starts talking about Elliot and Jules and then says, you know what, I don't want to talk about them. I don't give a crap about them. We all breathed a sigh of relief. But you want to know why that really happened? Because Sam Levinson had nothing to write. Like literally, there's nothing there in the story. There was no usable, useful dialogue that could have transpired between these two characters because there is no plot. They would have just been rehashing what happened in the past. Let's look at Elliot. Aside from being the interloper between Rue and Jules, what's the point of his character? I'm asking the same questions about him that I did Jules. What's his storyline? What's his purpose? What development has he actually had? None! He didn't need to be- you could lift him right out of the show. You should have lifted him right out of the finale. Those four minutes wasted on that beautiful song, but still wasted. I was like, stop singing. This isn't glee. I need to get back to the plot, but you know, there is none. Okay, let's now talk about Kat. In season one, she had a full arc. In season two, she's practically absent from the show. I can't even call what she has a storyline. It's as though anything that's being written for her isn't to do with investment in the character. It's literally obligation, whether it's contractual, whether it's that he still just wants to stick with this character. That's the only reason we've had anything. And it's all been superficial and it's all been rushed. You know, she's talking about these people, the, the self-love people on Instagram, but that scene, it literally comes out of nowhere and as quickly as it came on the screen, it went away and is never revisited. It was so weird to see that scene in Lexi's play where Kat is back in, you know, her outfit to be, you know, dancing on the internet. What? Where, what does that have to do with anything? And I mean, it even was insulting the way they wrote Kat and Ethan's relationship. Not that any of us were deeply invested or cared or shipped them, but to just whittle it down to this weird, oh, I have a brain disorder. That was it? Really? That's how they ended the relationship? That's the only storyline that you could give Kat this season? She's had two lines. Um, I wouldn't break up with Ethan and, no, Maddie, don't do it. Cassie's not worth it. Like, Okay, enough tomatoes, let's give this show some of its flowers. Rue's addiction is written so well, and I think that is because Sam Levinson has an experience related to that, so he, you know, he understands it completely, and he, it's the best writing he does on the show, to be quite honest, and obviously it's carried by Zendaya, who is fantastic, but it's like, that's... Uh, that's not enough to keep the, the show going. Do you know what I mean? There's other things. Sometimes it feels like there are two different shows. Like whatever was happening with Rue this season felt like a completely different show to Cassie, Nate, and Maddie. Like completely different shows, probably still on HBO, but different. Even Cassie's arc this season, what was it? Like we understand that Cassie's someone who has low self-esteem and will do these things and so quick to fall in love, but still by the end of the season there was just no resolution to what happened with her. The same with Rue and this drug situation. She I even thought that the season was gonna focus on her like pushing drugs in school. She had this whole suitcase which is now flushed and with this huge drug dealer and it's just oh it's fine forgotten even in the narration um Rue says oh, I stayed sober for the rest of the year so that woman left her alone just let her escape her house and wasn't bothered to come after Rue really we're supposed to believe that and ashtray <sighs> again shock value it was devastating everyone's talking about it. oh my gosh you know they were brothers can't believe this happened you know there's ashtray but let's Look underneath it. That didn't make sense. Astro has been shown, portrayed as a character who is smart and quick thinking. For him to run into the bathroom, you know, be hiding in the bathtub, he doesn't even know if he shot Fez, in my opinion. He could have killed Fez. It, 
it just didn't make sense and it felt like it was done as this you know ruse for like the season finale effect like we need some drama like he started with the drama of Fez hitting Nate and that was enough to keep momentum going for the show and so he needed to end it with something equally if not more dramatic again just a smoke and mirrors to pretend that the show is actually doing good when it's it's just not so that scene which felt like something out of a mafia movie like I said well acted it was great but look behind the curtain the wizard he's just lying to us this smoke and mirrors <sighs> oh and I almost forgot Cal what was that ending once again not making any sense another plot hole why is Cal arrested? Listen, I was waiting as they were like, Cal Jacobs, you're under arrest. I was like, for? For? <laughs> don't they normally tell you in the US what they're arresting you for? But I don't even think Sam Levinson knows, so he couldn't fill in that space. He, he didn't know what the words would have been. Um, but overall, aside from all of that, of course, the cast is fantastic. That goes without saying. It's just the writing. <laughs> Sam Levinson needs to get a writer's room. Stop trying to be Tyler Perry, okay? Just get some bloody chairs, get a table, and discuss what's going to happen through the season. It's okay to need help. It's okay to employ other people. So, do you think I'm being too critical of the season? What are your thoughts? Did, did you like it? I mean, I did like it in the beginning too, but were you able to see that it fell off? Or do you think it was strong throughout and that everyone's complaining for no reason? Are you just glad to have television out there based on teenagers that's better than Riverdale. <laughs> Let me know.